to like sync the audio to the video. Uh, so was that your thing you do before? <laughs> no, no, just pumping myself up. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. All right, we're on. Okay. Taylor, thanks for coming on. Yeah. You're a busy woman. Just a little bit, but oh, it's all good. When I seen you yesterday and you showed me your schedule, I was like, that's just too much. Uh, most of it, not most of it, a little bit of it changed and stuff because I was still in trying to figure out what worked for me each week. So I changed some of the days. So it wasn't so crazy. Oh, if 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 you posted that, you'd give so many so many people anxiety. <laughs> I've like- sent it to some people, just being like, oh, I've got these these times free. Are you are like able to do stuff?" And they're like, "Well, okay, you're busy." And I'm like, "Yeah, I have to be." <laughs> Is Tuesday like your ch- kind of? Do you have like an off day? Uh, Thursday uh, is now going to be my rest evening. So I'll train in the morning, but I'll have the evening off training. So I'll just do my normal stuff, which is like work and just do some recovery. But in the evenings now, I don't train just to um, prepare for competitions and stuff. So, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, Taylor's like a really high level wrestler. Yeah. And she's off to the Commonwealth Games to represent New Zealand. Yeah. Is that next, not next month, next month? Uh, yeah, so I leave at the very end of this month on the 31st, late at night, and then I should get there 1 p.m. in England, London, um, on the 1st, yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, I am. I'm really excited. It's been a few years since I got to compete internationally, so... Obviously. This is the second second time you've been to the Commonwealth Games? Third. Third? Yeah. My third Games. So you would have been heaps young when you went to your first. I was flying to Sweden when I was 21 um, to prepare for my debut Games in Glasgow. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, you have a heap. I don't even know that you've lived like all. You're a bit of a gypsy. Yeah, I had a life. You did. You know this? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I was in Sweden for I think four weeks or so before I competed. Um, and then I made history in Glasgow by being the first female wrestler to medal at the Commonwealth Games for New Zealand. So now I have my own Wikipedia page. No way. Yeah. You're the first guest with a Wikipedia page. Yeah, Google me. Famous. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome yeah that's no shit. Cool. so let's start from the start when did it when did wrestling start for you um when i moved to christchurch uh dad used to wrestle back in high school so one of the gyms that was close to us he found they had wrestling so he took my brother to wrestling and then he found out that women's wrestling just came into the olympics in 2000 and then he made me go hated it <laughs> it was yeah. horrible didn't know what i was doing um and then eventually like through obviously throughout the years i i understood it started winning some competitions and then he gave me the choice if i wanted to carry on or not when i was 16 and then i decided i'll carry on wrestling because it's all i knew yeah yeah and then from there you moved to and then from there where did you go um from christchurch south island i moved to the north island for a few years um, because I had um, the coach I had for 12 years, we had a falling out and I wanted, uh, I needed more coaching and better training partners. So I moved to the North Island and the Bay of Plenty. And then I eventually moved over to Adelaide, I think 2017. So I've been here for like five-ish years um, because of Luba, the head coach of the wrestling club. He was very technical and I really liked him. So I moved over for better training and better coaching as well. And now I'm here. Mm. At M16. Oh, you're at M16 and... Yep. And M16 the and the wrestling gym. club. Yeah. Because yeah. you've just started pretty... Like, you've just started pretty seriously taking on jiu-jitsu as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, again, there's no wrestling competitions and no females. So um, I'm cross-training and cross-competing um, in both sports. Yeah. Where's your favourite place you've lived? Um, Sweden would have been pretty cool. I lived in Finland for a while on a scholarship as well. That was really nice. That was really, really cool. But they're both quite similar. Like, the air is super nice. It's cold, though, a lot of the time. Do you There's see the Northern that... Lights? No. It's on my bucket list. Really? Yeah, I You really were so close. Them. I know. Um, one of the nights that the Northern Lights were passing by, it was super cloudy, so we couldn't oh, see them. So it. I was real upset about that. And that was when I was in Finland as well. Um, but apparently New Zealand get the southern lights. So yeah, I think they do. Yeah, I Queensland. think there's a place in Australia out in the outback that gets it as well. Yeah, I want to see those now too. So it's mm. on my bucket list um, to see. It's more just a whole bunch of nature stuff that I want to see on my bucket list. Mm, you're yeah. always doing stuff. You yeah. always see on like your pictures, you and your boyfriend, you're always <laughs> out adventuring. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't uh, particularly have a choice in the matter, but 
He does it and he smiles. <laughs> That's all right. That's all he can do. You yeah. could drop him on his head at the end of the day. Yeah, I headbutt him a lot, <laughs> yeah. <but> accidentally. <laughs> Considering how tall he is and how I managed to headbutt him, I don't know. But Yeah, oh, yeah I've happens. seen you fuck up some pretty big dudes. You absolutely destroyed me in the gym once and I, that was the first time I got in my car and I was like, I was like, that was fucking just the first Sorry. time. I was like, wow, it's crazy. Like, you're so strong. Yeah. I did it to someone yesterday. Um, I, like, threw them around and stuff. And he's like, oh, what was that? Judo. I'm like, don't insult me. <laughs> it's wrestling. <laughs> it's such a grind. Um, it's such a hard sport. Yeah, I've been working a lot on my double legs and my penetration step. So that's been, like, uh, one of my few focuses at the moment while I prepare. Just going back to the basics. And, um... I hit a double leg on the guy and I was like psyching myself out. I was like, just go, just go. So I did it. And then I ran him into the pole in the middle of M16. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, whoops. He was laughing, so he was okay. <laughs> the one right in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. I'm su- one. A lot of people, like, I'm surprised not as many people have cleaned themselves up on that. I think there's that um, space awareness. You just know it's there. So you're just always conscious of it. When I Miles, think. you know the first pole where they got, he put that new, like, uppercut hook thing yeah. the first day he put it up i was just playing around on it and for some reason he was i kicked it and my foot like wrapped around it and i just hit the metal Ugh. on it yeah. and miles was like i fucking knew someone was going to do that and then you like first day first day i've like just broken my ankle on it <laughs> it's horrible well with the kids class that i coach on fridays we do we play this game and they're going to, like, try to tackle each other. But for some reason, they all, like, hover towards that pole with, like, the bolt sticking out. Mm. Just that one pole. They all hover towards it. And I'm like, oh, my God. You were saying that you can get yesterday that you can get, like, up to 14, 15 kids. Oh, yeah, this is at the wrestling club. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, Which is a pretty good turnout. But yeah. not many females. Uh, we have, in the at the wrestling club, in our kids' class, we get about two females. Like, mm. young girls. They're about the same size. But... Generally, yeah, again, like the same as M16, like family orientated. So like the brothers and sisters come along and then they like train together and stuff. So it's kind of cool. That's where we get most of our numbers from is from families. Yeah. 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 You were saying yesterday you're trying to get like more females involved into wrestling. Yeah. I just started this um, women's leadership in sport course, online course thing last night. Um, Trying to get some insight and some, I don't know. Um, people get to know some people that mm, might help network yeah that sort of thing um at the moment i'm still trying to figure out what what the main purpose is at the moment <laughs> you were saying that you've that. like you've invented or like you've started to develop a grading system which is pretty yeah. cool as well because that's something i think wrestling's like that's probably a reason why kids don't gravitate towards wrestling because there's no like progression in it yeah, exactly. Um, you only know if you're progressing is when you start, you start dating to, people. Yeah, when you do a double leg and it was easy, mm. like that's when you know you progress. But yeah, so I've developed a, um, a grading system. Um, so it's got a whole bunch of syllabuses. So I think we have incorporated the judo belt colors that they have. Mm. So we've got five levels. So the first three colors are going to be our novice level. And then the last two, green and blue, will be the intermediate. Then anything above that is advanced. Um, so basically, from someone who is a pure beginner, it should take about five years, and then they can become advanced and hopefully mm. be wrestling nationally, internationally, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so it's a basic syllabus from gymnastics exercises to neck warm ups to just certain drills, um, stance in motion, and to like our basic foundation movements and stuff. Yeah, so that's what that is. Yeah, right. It's such a hard, it's such a grind to train. I remember, I'm not sure if you ever met my mate Will. He used to do jujitsu at M16. He, um, when he was alive, he went to an M. When we first started going to M16, he's like, "Sav, you got to fucking see these wrest like these wrestling drills and shit." He did one class, and he's like, "I'm never ever <laughs> ever gonna do it again." And I was like, it "Cannot be that hard." So I went to one of the wrestling classes and they started fucking doing those neck like neck rolls where they like put their head on the ground. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was Adam Collett I seen. He like would put his head on the ground and his body, his like legs would oh, run yeah. around his body. And I was like, what the fuck? And then they start doing front flips off the head. <laughs> and it's just like, what? Yeah, we still do those. Yeah. What the fuck? And then you were saying like, 
you're it's not like your necks are made of iron you're just so used to the pain yeah pretty much we don't like we don't get sore necks often it's usually when we don't do the exercises we get sore yeah yeah that's usually when we get the most sore is when we um haven't stretched properly but even like this morning when we were doing some wrestling stuff because we hadn't stretched properly we were just like starting off doing some drilling and bending over like and it was muscles so cold. Are stretching yeah so it was getting super achy really quickly mm-hmm. so that was really annoying but we got over it pretty quickly it's going to be freezing over in the UK. It's summertime, so maybe it'll be like It'll be now. like Australia's winter, yeah. I guess. They might have like, maybe that'll be their one week of like sunshine, like summer sunshine. Have you ever been to England? Um, Not England, Scotland. Yeah. Scotland would be nice. Yeah, it was all right. It was nice. A bit grey, cloudy. Yeah, I don't yeah. mind the cold though. I'm so used to Australian summers. Whenever I travel, I was telling you, I said I've travelled like heaps of Europe. It's yeah. always just hot and hot. I've never been anywhere cold. Yeah. Oh, cause wait, what, so you would have gone around winter time, our time? Yeah, I, went, I always used to go in like June, July, August. Yeah, That's yeah. when I'd go because that's peak season over in like Greece and like a lot of parts of Europe. Yeah. Yeah, because I was there for camps and stuff in Sweden and Finland at those times too. And they have, like, lakes everywhere. Frozen like, over? No, 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 not frozen. Like, summertime. Um, but it'd still be really cold in the water. Mm. You know, like, here, the water at least gets warmer throughout the summer. But over there, it like, stays cold. <laughs> oh, the water's always cold here. I can't handle the beach. Yeah. It's always freezing. Because over in Europe, some of their beaches, like the Mediterranean Sea, and that, it's so warm. Yeah. Like their beaches are so warm and then you get to Australia and it's like a 40 degree day and you put your foot in the water and it's still ice cold. It's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a big swimmer. I'm not very good at swimming. So I usually just hang out with water to like waist height or something. Yeah. Or I sort of drown. So then from from Adelaide, when what year did you move to Sweden to do all your camps and all that? Or Finland, um, sorry. That was... 2000, oh, I think it was around 2017, so 2000, end of, no, I think it was the beginning of 2017, I was over in Finland for a while, oh man, I can't remember, maybe 2015, I think I was trying to prepare for um, the Olympics in 2016. And did you so do Rio. like six months or something? No, so the funding I got didn't get me six months, it got me about three or four, um, so I was over in Sweden for a while training and competing with the Swedish team and we had to go to so I went, I went to Algeria for one of my first comps so that was Algeria Af- yeah no shit yeah so we went to Algiers in Algeria their capital um for our Oceania and Africa championship and if we placed top two in that we would have qualified for Rio Olympics but I ended up coming third so that meant I have to go off and do the um next to or the next world um, qualifying tournament for the olympics so i stayed in sweden for um, a while i went to the first qualifying tournament which was in mongolia Ulaanbaatar. you really have been fucking everywhere (laughs) yeah it's crazy that wrestling's taken you everywhere though because it's not really like a financial based sport like you don't obviously make heaps of money off wrestling like you were saying it's funding based yeah, so like if you do well and you perform well, then you um, get scholarships and stuff like that. Um, so it pays to like train outside of the mats as well as on the mats and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool if you can like kind of see the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we went there. So we went to Mongolia for our first world tournament, and I think I placed the uh, fifth fifth at that one. Um, so then I had to go to the last qualifying um, tournament, which was in Turkey. Um, I think two weeks after, uh, but again, I, I don't think I did very well in that one either. I think it was like fifth again. Um, Do the Russians and Americans kind of dominate the sport? Not really. No, not so much. Um, each weight class have their, um, have their top wrestlers, but I think for the women's Japanese women take, really? take out most of the gold medals. Um, and then it varies with the bronze and the silvers between like um, Mongolia wins some at Worlds, America wins some, Canada wins some, uh, India win. Um, so it just really? varies. Yeah, Ukraine, Russia, Hungary, Bulgaria, and stuff like that. Uh, my friend uh, from Estonia, she's um, won a couple world medals, um, bronze and silvers, I think. 
is yeah. a, it's a pretty tight knit community. Pretty much. Because it's a niche, kind of niche, not really niche, but it's like a pretty small sport. Yeah. It's, or at the at the high at the highest usually level. Usually, it's the same people that go to the same tournaments. Mm. Um. So, like you know, over the like decade, I've seen the same people at the same tournaments, still competing, still wrestling for their country, still number one in their country. Because it is a minority sport, you know, not many people do it. And so over the years, you do wrestle different girls over the years, but they never really stay or hang around. So you're always left being the only female that do the sport. Mm. So, yeah. There is some there is some really good matches to watch. Like it, if people actually sat down and watched like a Bo Nickel or like a Jordan Burroughs match where it's just explosion, like so explosive and like they're so mm. strong. I like the women's matches. I think they're more exciting. I'm, I'm not familiar with heat because they obviously don't get televised as much or talked about as much. Not really, no. Um, it's those ones that keep winning year after year. So, mm. yeah, Jordan Burroughs has won multiple world titles and he keeps winning the nationals and stuff. For See, America. those guys are getting a bit of shine now. Like Those guys are kind of branching out. Like Jordan Burroughs is going to the WWE, I think. Is he? Yeah, he, oh. Jordan Burroughs signed with, the, with WWE and... Um, Bo Nichols going into MMA now. Oh, cool. Bo That's Nichols, cool. yeah, and he's going to do so well. Yeah, because we even had some guys from Perth wrestling um, going to the amateur professional, whatever, the professional wrestling with the WWE stuff. Mm. Obviously, it's not WWE, but whatever, they have their version. They're doing that now too. Because a lot of the um, the wrestlers that started wrestling here in SA originally wanted to do that wrestling mm. the backyard wrestling there's, there's money in it I guess I guess yeah mm. like for New Zealand um, New Zealand wrestling was doing quite well purely because they're being funded by their professional wrestling yeah and then um, I think at the time people kept being like oh you do the the wrestling where they pick up the chairs and they hit you and they're like no 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 and they're getting really upset about it and they like tell them like you know we're sick of being associated to you guys every time they talk about wrestling they talk about the chairs and like well if that's the case then you can't have our funding and then that's when wrestling went down in new zealand mm. as they lost all their funding yeah it's kind of some people might use it as a launch pad to get into other careers yeah bone nickel won his last uh, his mma debut i think by knockout right yeah he didn't oh. even take him down just knocked him out that's cool yeah he's a big dude there's some of them are massive like we were talking about uh, alexander krellen yeah stan was telling us oh i was telling you he was telling us that he he was like adamant that the russians used to just inject <laughs> these kids with like monkey dna or ape dna and do these weird tests on them because yeah. that dude was not human yeah no they used to do that because my um uh my first coach that I had, um, he was Ukrainian, but he was a part of the USSR, and he was he could hold his breath underwater for like five, six minutes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, because his blood cell count was really high. Just a born killer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, like even people like that, they were doing tests on. Um, so you can only imagine those who were within sport, what sort of tests they did. Is there much like steroid abuse in that in wrestling? Uh, I think there might be. Um, Probably not at like the, <clears throat> not at like the Commonwealth Games Olympic levels. Uh, you know, you just don't know because some people don't look like they do drugs, and then they're done. Mm. <laughs> You're just like, oh, really? Have you That's seen strange. that documentary? Oh, what's it called? It's on Netflix. It's such a good documentary. It's about. Um, it starts off with this guy. I f- the name's just. Blanked. It starts off with this guy and he's recreating um, Lance Armstrong's doping cycle to see if, like, he's a cyclist and he's recreating it to see how much of an edge he can get. Like, so he's doing, like, a two-year documentary and he meets this guy from Russia and he's – and it's, oh, it's a real documentary and he meets this guy from Russia who's um, used to – he's really good at, like, doping people without getting caught yeah and the documentary took like a 180 and it's it went from being about this cyclist to being about russia (laughs) doping all of their athletes and hiding it yeah and because of that documentary this guy has been extradited to america the russian guy because russia want to kill him so he's yeah because um what they do is like when they're um so 
you're supposed to get randomly drug tested so they can show up on your door at say 4 a.m in the morning and you get drug tested and stuff like that but what they do with the russians i'm pretty sure is they give them pre-warning so they give them pre-warning so that they can get it all out of their system yeah they used to have a hole in the wall almost like where they would pass their piss and they give fresh samples and stuff it's an insane documentary i'll find the name for you after yeah it's so so weird because the documentary just starts as this cycle documentary and then in real time it uncovers that russia just dope um, everyone i think it was the tokyo olympics russia actually got banned the whole country did from competing yeah um, yeah it was because you get a certain amount of um i think it's like six athletes or something within a period a time period like 10 years six athletes get done for drugs then the whole country get um, banned Mm. from the games um, but then I think they changed their federation. I think it's just called the... Uh, I think they changed it to Federation of Russia instead of Russia or something. Yeah, they changed their flags and stuff. Yeah, there's old um, loopholes around it. Yeah. It's a pretty... The Olympics can get pretty, like, dirty in that regard, kind of, like, money-wise and corruption-wise. Yeah, like, because uh, I think medals, you know, medals are worth a lot of money. <clears throat> I think the most is Singapore. Singapore offer the most money for medals. So if you win gold... Uh, oh, yeah. you get you can get paid. Yeah, so I think if you win gold for Singapore, they give you like a million dollars. Really? Yeah. No shit. I yeah. thought it was like a thankless job. No, no, no. So you get stuff. Obviously, you get sponsorships and stuff after yeah. after a gold. Yeah, um, and I think in India, you get given like houses and cars and stuff. Even for Commonwealth medals, you get houses and cars. What do you get for New Zealand? I got some funding. Really? Oh, you get funding. You actually get something. I got some funding. That's yeah, cool. three months in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's for not bad. It's yeah. a three-month holiday. Yeah, it's more than what I could afford anyway for myself to fund my um, competitions, um, that's for sure, by myself. Yeah, Um, but I think New Zealand and Australia offer the least amount of money, I think, for their medalists. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the least amounts, yeah. Yeah, because I thought, thought, yeah, I thought thought obviously you'd make money with sponsorships and ads and all that afterwards. It just really depends. I mean, if you're, you know, what some of the markets are looking for as well yeah Mm. i don't i don't don't do it (laughs) yeah so i don't know (laughs) yeah so when did you realize that you were like pretty like you were high level like you were a pretty high level athlete were you born like a kind of athletic um i don't know i remember when i was real young i was living in nelson and we were doing this running race like a school thing and I was, like, running and I had my bucket. I don't know what I was doing. It must have been, like, five or something. And I was, like, running with this bucket. And I was, like, man, I'm real slow because <laughs> everyone kept passing me. But I was, like, five and these other yeah. people were bigger than me. And then I always thought I was a slow runner and then I was at school and I kept winning all the sprints. So I was just, like, you know, those weird, like, little memories of when I was, like, oh, I'm not very good at this. And then I go off and do it, like, years later and I'm quite good at it. It was just really weird, that weird transition in, in my thought process of maybe I'm, like, better than what I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm quite talented in multiple sports anyway. Um, like, I think I've been to nationals for, like, six different sports. Really? Yeah. What other ones? Um, I went to nationals for athletics, um, for sprinting. Um, I went for wrestling, obviously. I went for judo qualified for weightlifting uh, rugby as well really yeah um what else have i done um do you do gymnastics no way no i'm not that flexible no no my joints hurt (laughs) yeah that's a that's a different kind of animal isn't it yeah wrestling and gymnastics really wouldn't lend themselves to each other uh yeah like um i got a flexible back but my legs aren't very flexible Mm. I, i think i've got too much muscle for that to work um i just i think sevens rugby sevens um and i think i did dabble in some grappling so i think at the time it wasn't like how jujitsu is now it was like a weird wrestling version of grappling like catch wrestling no idea yeah i this think was it, years i ago. think it's catch wrestling i'm yeah. not sure i'm probably lying but i think it's catch wrestling. <laughs> yeah okay all right it was we'll catch say wrestling. that yeah, yeah we'll, say, we'll that. say that yeah so i did some national levels at those sort of sports and stuff and now you're getting like relatively good at jujitsu as well yeah, yeah yeah so that was that's kind of cool too and so sort of starting to understand a lot of it um it's like when i'm i don't know what you call it like o- open guard when i'm just sitting down mm. and the person standing mm-hmm. yeah that freaks me out a little bit 
I don't like being that You would low. obviously not be used to being on your back because that's like the nah. worst position you can be in in your sport. Yeah, it, I just feel like I'm not very strong. I feel so weak there and I just wonder why people like being here. So, so how like, does the point system work for wrestling? Is it So when you pin someone both shoulders down, is that over? Yeah, one second, both shoulders down and you win. Done. Yeah, so that's why you see people like moving around so much because they and, don't want to be pinned. And you get a point for like a double leg? Uh, you get four points. So if you're standing and you double leg your person or you throw them down to the ground from sta- from a standing position to a ground position, you get four points. If you say you go for a double leg and you're on your knees and you start crawling around on your knees before you take your person down, then that's two points. So basically the more danger you can get your opponent in, the more points you get. And then you can win by obviously pin or you can win by is – it, is it better to win by – is it tech, tech foul? Tech, tech fall, yeah. Tech fall. That's uh, like a complete – domination isn't yeah, it so you have to yeah tens it pretty much you got to be up by 10 points so whether it be they've got two points i've got to win by 12 so that's those 10 that 10 point difference um it's better to win by pin because even behind the scenes there are points for how you win so like if i tech fall someone um i think i must get four points if they get points and i also get points and win just by point by having the most points i think it's like three two or something so it can get pretty, like, yeah. intricate. Yeah, and then if I win by a pin, then I get more points. Maybe I get, like, five points in the background. So when it comes to, say, if there's, like, three of us in the same weight class, um, so, like, I think there was a case where it's like, Nigeria, India and, India and myself, I bet Nigeria, Nigeria bet India, and India bet me. Um, but because Nigeria had a pin, she got gold. Yeah, right. Because I only beat her by points. And then the same thing, India only bet me by points. But Nigeria pinned india so in the back so it's like more the most dominant victory kind of wins pretty much yeah so um that's also another way for them to determine who wins like a weight class and stuff like that so you're gonna be you're gonna be on live tv yeah that's gonna be cool yeah it will be i won't really um it won't really obviously you don't yeah you don't kind of like think about that but it'd be cool for everyone that knows you to watch you and see you on like live tv yeah hopefully they'll air it as well because um I think Australia have six wrestlers um, competing as well as New Zealand. So Male and female? Yeah, so two women, two men um, are competing. So hopefully they'll air some wrestling. Are there. the women in your division? No, I think one is lighter, like in the 50s, and the other one is in 76. So I'm mm. in the 68 class. Yeah, you were saying you're fighting heavier or like you're fighting at a different weight class yeah. than you usually do. Yeah, so, so I don't have to lose. Eat. Yeah, so I don't have to lose too much weight. So I only have like a kilo, a kilo and a half to lose. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, no, so I could do so that good. in the week leading up. Sauna. So good. Yeah, or I just, just a jog. Don't, don't have breakfast or something. Yeah. Yeah, because we got to weigh in in our wrestling outfit as well, so that adds on two hundred grams. So normally, like it was really bad when you had to like. For instance, like I had always had to cut like seven kilos and then the additional 200 that'd be, grams. So that'd be a lot. Like, doesn't sound like much to just cut the extra, but it, it is when you don't have that much That 200 to grams would kill you. Oh, it's so annoying. It's always that last like kilo or like 500 grams. That's probably the worst part of it. I could, um, usually cutting to 65 was totally fine. Like if I ate good and trained well, getting to 65 just happened by itself. But it was just from that, those last three kilos were really, really hard because, mm-hmm. um, like normally I'd train for an hour and a half, but then when I'm cutting weight and I'll be wrestling, I'd, I'd last like 30 seconds, have to have a rest yeah, <laughs> and then go again. So that's why it was so hard because I couldn't keep that constant movement going, whereas like now I can. So do you do like, do you ever have an off season or are you just always just going? Um, have you ever had like a break? Usually around Christmas time and stuff. Yeah, like It's little... hard to avoid all of the festivities um, around that time. So I, my my problem is learning how to relax and just let it happen. Yeah. So I was going to say you couldn't. You don't really have time for like hobbies or not really other interests besides kind of training. Yeah. Like whenever I see anyone that I haven't seen in a while, they're like, "Oh, what's new?" I'm like, "Oh, nothing." Do you have just like working, time training. to watch a show? Yeah. You have time to do like that kind yeah, of. Yeah, I shit. binge watch a lot of stuff. What are you watching? Um, 
don't hate me. I started watching Friends. <laughs> Friends is good. It's funny. <laughs> Friends is really good. My my fiance's never seen Friends. Oh, she's seen like a couple episodes here and there. She's more of a Seinfeld kind of girl. Mm. But I was like, you have to watch Friends. It's great. It is good. I, I think it's so funny. Um, I like show, like usually it's just the old ones. But you know, they got all those episodes within a season. Yeah, they got like, they got like 24, 24 episodes yeah. a season. Have you ever seen The Sopranos? Uh only when I was younger, mum and dad used to watch Sopranos it. is yeah. good, and that's got heaps of episodes every season, yeah. and they're all they're all so good. Yeah, like that sort of stuff. Like I find the hardest thing to do is trying to find a show to watch. It takes me about an hour to find a show that I want to watch and get into, or else I just like stare at them and I get so bored. Have you seen Stranger Things? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That was a good show. Yeah, I restarted that when um, we finished um, the first part of the season four. So I like rewatched everything right back up to where I you've started. seen the you've seen the last episodes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, good. They are good. They are good. Have you seen Breaking Bad? Uh, yeah, I've seen all of that. Yeah. Yeah, apparently Better Call Saul's good. Oh really? Yeah, I started watching that, but I, I don't know what happened. I fell off the wagon. Yeah, they got stopped. the last season. Even the Peaky yeah. Blinders. I started watching that. Never seen it. Oh, yeah. I've seen the first like four episodes, and I was into it. I just don't know what happened. I just mm. kind of gave up on it. Yeah, I got real into my Asian shows for a while too. Like the Korean shows? Korean movies and shows are so good. Oh, they're funny. They're so good. I actually, I watched, I was watching one Korean show and then maybe three or four Korean shows later, they um, reference one of the Korean shows I'd watched. Mm. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so into this. Like, I, I'm a part you're of You're deep now. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're I was just like, deep I know what they're talking it. about. Had, oh, yeah. Squid Game obviously kicked off heaps of um. Oh, Heaps yeah, we started, we finished that before people started watching it. Really? It just looked cool, yeah. And then everyone started talking about it, and I'm just like, I was first. <laughs> yeah, but you have to watch them with subtitles. Yeah, like, uh, yeah dub, I like their voices, yeah. Dub's not the same. Nah. Cause they don't, yeah, because they don't have any emotion in their voice. No, it just doesn't fit, you know, with some cartoons. And you're like, that person's oh, voice Oh, so you get into be. anime as well. Yeah, I like anime. Really? Yeah, well, living with Jack, he always watches anime. Like, um, I think him and his partner are watching what naruto at the moment yeah yeah so i just like to catch them yeah i never really got heaps into anime i do like korean film though is really good if you're into like horror movies and japanese films and japanese yeah. films are good anything japanese good yeah anything food culture's good oh yeah i like japanese jelly when i went to japan um to prepare for the gold coast games they had these like big one kilo things of jelly and their Jelly. stores. Yeah, so yum. They're like 7 Elevens over there have like pretty yeah. dope. And they food. had these real yum, like frozen smoothie balls, like fruit things, like peach things. Mm. When you ate them, they like melted in your mouth. Yum. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of money on that. And their chicken in their stores are real yummy. Like the fried chicken and stuff. Yeah, like pre cooked chicken sticks in the stores. They were yum. Do you miss back home? Uh, yeah. Do you ever go? No, I haven't been home, so I haven't seen my family in about four years. Really? But um, I'm going back home for Wrestling Nationals in October, and I get to see my family, so I'm really excited. That'll be cool. Yeah, super, super excited. Is your family in South Island? Yeah. 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 Is that the coldest part? Yeah. Yeah. I was with a group of dudes from South Island last Friday. I was in the doghouse last Friday. I went out for one beer. (laughs) <laughs> and it just turned crazy. But cops came at three in the morning. But I was with all these blokes. My mate brought all of these blokes he works with, and they were all from the South Island. Oh, yeah. Menaces. <laughs> just maniacs. Kiwis oh, really? are just built different. They're just crazy. <laughs> yeah, we had a hard time um, in Tahiti once um, competing. I, I don't know what happened, but... Um, yeah, we got taken home by the French police to back to our hotel. <laughs> Does the after parties, because obviously everyone's been so strict on cam and stuff, do the after parties just get way too out of hand? Well, yeah, because well, we're cutting weight, we're focusing, we're not drinking, so like we're drunk off of our first drink. Yeah, but then you just kick on because yeah, you're athletes. Pretty much. <laughs> and I think we're just overly hyperactive as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be crazy. like just getting you a get group the of over- ADHD hi- hi- people. Like the hyperactive ones and then you get the ones that like cry. <laughs> Usually the boys cry. It's funny. Yeah. yeah, that would be crazy. It's It'd be weird to see, oh, there's one of the puppies. <laughs> I had to lock up the dogs today because I didn't want one of them to jump on you and like do an ACL. I didn't want 
this house to be the reason you didn't make it <laughs> to the Commonwealth Games. I was stressing about it all last night. It's all right. I'll still go. I'll still compete. Yeah. I'll just get over my injury. <laughs> Obviously, everyone's injured when they're going in. Like, there's all niggling injuries and that. Yeah, just a fair few. It um, depends on how you take them and how you let them affect your trainings pretty much. Um, I was always taught to, like, if I have an injury, I was always taught that, you know, you you can still train and compete, et cetera, but um, you just end up doing things unusually. Like, mm. for instance, like, if I'm re- quite good at, like, a two-on-one fireman's, but if I can't go down because, say, my hip hurt, my, like... Fireman's over the shoulder? Yeah, the shoulder yeah. throw one. So I think for my build-up for ADCC, my, um, I think I, I tore my oblique, so I couldn't really overstretch one side of my body and I couldn't go down properly just because of the stretch of coming I back I forgot up. you went to ADCC trials, didn't you, with yeah. Declan? How yeah. did you go? Good. I had four matches. I won three and lost one via points. So I lost my semi, so that meant I carried on into a bronze medal match and won my bronze through a walkover. That's awesome. Yeah. No super shit. cool. I was super excited. I was so nervous. I've never been so nervous in my life. I had to go talk to... There would have been a lot of people there, eh? Oh, yeah, I didn't mind about the people. That was fine. I can get over that. It's just competition. Mm. I just wanted to do well. And, do you um, get shitty when you lose? No, no, no I've lost lots of matches. So, so it I doesn't... Over it. As long as I can learn something from my loss, then I'm totally fine, um, which is what happened. Like, I had a super bad timing at one of my movements, and she caught me, and she won five points. So from that, I can... Did you win learn. all of yours by points? Uh, no, I won them via submission. All of them? Yeah, no except shit. for the except last for one. The last the one. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, so that was really cool. So I threw them, got a submission, and then won that. Yeah. It'd be really hard for a lot of girls to, like, prepare for your wrestling because obviously... Yeah. Like, it would be a, it, it would obviously be a massive advantage to go into jiu-jitsu with your kind of wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all right. I don't mind when they try. Like, I can give them credit for trying and stuff because... Um, trying to go for movements that they learn, but because I've been wrestling for so long, um, I can feel it quite easily, so I can just counter it and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. if they do it well and stuff and they get movements, like in yeah, because you'd be able to just feel shifts of people's like body that other people wouldn't be able to feel. Yeah, so that's that body awareness that you learn th- through wrestling experience and stuff. So with people who are just as good as you are, um, you know, you start to feel each other out. So the only time people usually shoot for movements is when they feel that there's a hole in the in the in the um in the wrestle. But generally, trying to find a hole is really hard. You have to start to create it, and that's when you have to start those scrambles and start moving the person. Yeah, for people that see wrestling and they're like, "Oh, it doesn't look like it would hurt that much." <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> hurt. Oh, I most don't of my know. injuries when aren't you, even from wrestling. When you get like slammed, because you're so used to it, when you like get picked up and smashed on your back. Never like happens. it kind of, no, it kind of gets like the wind taken out of you. Like when people watch like say MMA, and there's yeah. a lot of wrestling, and they're like, "Oh, this is boring." It's like, do you know how fucking tired these poor blokes are right now? Yeah. Especially if it's like a five round main event, and they're just grinding and grinding. There was recently, uh, oh, I can't remember, um, Gamrot, and it was two weeks ago, Gamrot and Sakarian, I think it was. It was a th- five round fight. It was a main event. That was just five rounds of the highest pace scrambling and you wrestling. Have to be so fit for that. And they didn't stop. And in between, they're punching each other in the face. <laughs> but that the scrambles in that fight were insane because they went for like three minutes at a time. Yeah. Where they were just scrambling to get back up taking someone else down. It was fucking so tiring just watching it. <laughs> yeah, like through um wrestling and stuff it was like um like different ways you can beat people so it's like oh if you're more technical than the person you'll be able to beat them but if they're just as technical then you could beat them through strength and if you can't beat them through strength because you're both evenly matched then it'll come down to fitness Mm -hmm. who the fittest person is um so generally when i prepare for competitions i usually have like a list like one was like oh am i technical am i healthy like no injuries um how's my weight going like is it good like if everything is on track then i know mentally i can you know be at ease and confident with my competitions but if Mm. one of them is out i'm like freak yeah yeah i'm like oh i'm not ready as long as you've done everything 
and you've like Pretty covered much. all your bases, then it's just up to the day. Yeah. And then you can go out there and have the best day of your life, or you can just fucking not not show up. Yeah, exactly. Which is probably when you'd get angry when you'd like have done uh, all the preparation. Post post comp depression yeah. and stuff. It's real. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So you just get super depressed. So you know, go from like training three times a day to like not training at all. Eating a bucket of ice cream, watching Korean like anime. <laughs> yeah cry as they cry (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so throughout my years i've learned a lot of stuff so like even those sort of things like Mm -hmm. when you just keep scrambling and stuff you know like people train real hard to be able to do that scrambling so so fun to watch when like in a frantic like mma fight or something where there's just they're just throwing each other around and when someone's really good at scrambling like alexander volkanovsky He's amazing at scrambling. Yeah. You can get him down, but you'll never be able to hold him down. Yeah. He's just so good at scrambling and getting back up. Yeah, it's cool. I like scrambling. Mm. Uh, I run out of gas sometimes, but it's, it's fun while it it's lasts. It's heaps of explosive movement. Yeah, it's just moving um, with the holes that the person creates, and, you know, they do the same thing. You're just, like, stuck together, and you're just, like, I don't know, two eels just... Tony Ferguson used to be really good at scrambling when he was in his prime as well. He was like a wet noodle. Like, you just couldn't <laughs> hold him. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. No, nah, that's cool. Mm. Yeah, no, nah, there is good. And then is Adam is Adam Collett helping you train or is he yeah. going to is he going to the Commonwealth as well? Or is no, he's not coming to the Commonwealth. Um, I don't think there's anyone from the wrestling club that's um, going at all. Actually, I know that there's no one from the wrestling club that's going. Um, they're mainly like Sydney, Melbourne um, mm. competitors. Um, he is helping me um, prepare. So we're training in the mornings now. So we trained six this morning. Last week we did a couple 6 a.m. mornings as well. Um, Wednesday nights when he's here, uh, we did Friday evening as well. So I've started training Friday evenings as I've dropped my Thursday evenings. Um, because that time difference, I think England is seven and a half hours behind. Do you have to train to kind of peak when they, when, like... Yeah, so you're, my energy you're, levels and stuff yeah, will like, be... Yeah, like, so do you have to train later at night or earlier in the morning? Uh, it'll just be night times. So um, I've written all of my schedule and stuff. Yeah, I think they're 12 hours, oh, it's 12 hours behind us or eight hours? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I train... Fr- so, for instance, I've dropped my Thursday nights. So I'll train Thursday mornings. I'll do early morning. I don't, I don't really mind just to get it out of the way. And then Thursday nights I have off, Friday mornings I have off, and then I'll train in the evening on Fridays. So basically when I backtrack that, it should be around the time that I should be competing mm. um, while, while I'm over there. So hopefully I can get my energy levels peaking. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really excited to test that out and see how that goes because I haven't really done that before. Apparently, oh, I don't know, a lot of people when they're, fought, when they're from, like, say, Brazil or something and they're fighting in America, they'll try and train, like, to suit the time yeah. so they peak at a certain time. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's a tactic. I've just never actually um, had to do it before. Well, I've always had to do it, but I've never actually done it because I'm um, planning it myself. Because I've also had to do some research on jet lag and stuff, seeing as I get there about five days before I compete. I don't do you want get jet lag? Go. Have you got it? Re- oh, like, yeah, I really? always used to, yeah. Um, I I had, the only time I never got it was when my minerals and my water levels were really good and stuff. Um, I've never really dealt with jet lag besides the last time I... The last time I came from Europe, when I flew from Cyprus to Australia, I didn't sleep for two days. Yeah. That was the first time, and that was horrible. Yeah. But, that's, but that was the first time it's ever happened to me. Yeah, it's, it's gross. Like, um, you can also get sick and stuff from the acclimatization and jet lag combined. So I don't want to get sick, and I don't want jet lag and stuff like that. So I've had to pre-plan, like, when I need to sleep on the flight, when I need to eat food, when it's breakfast, dinner time, and stuff like that. So I have to... Um, properly prepare and go to bed later before going wake up early or later and stuff like that in when you in south i'm not heaps familiar with like new zealand's landscape but i know they got like a pretty high they got a pretty high altitude don't they oh do they i don't know i was gonna say in south island were you training at like a high altitude oh not really Um, have you in finland or anything would you have been training at like a pretty high altitude i think the air is drier there Mm. yeah um, I never really put altitude in consideration at the places I've been to because they'd usually be camps, so you'd get used to everything throughout the camp, like build up your fitness and stuff mm, like that. Because apparently there's like a correlation with high altitude and like people who are nat- like people who are born in high altitude and their fitness levels. Yeah, I think that's more like, you know, um, I had a stopover in Ethiopia once 
and I was there for like eight hours and I just slept the whole eight hours. Short of breath. Yeah, I just, mm. just slept. I'd like wake up, move around. I was totally awake and then all of a sudden I'm just like getting ready to go to sleep again. Mm. I was just so tired. Yeah, because o- obviously like well, Dagestan and stuff where Khabib and like a lot of those kind of like Sambo wrestlers and stuff are from, mm. they live in the mountains so they live really high altitude yeah. and apparently they have a high red blood cell count yeah. because of it. Yeah. So that's probably, that leans towards maybe why they're so dominant and just relentless. Yeah, because, um, you know, one of the illegal ways um, is, like, blood doping is illegal. Oh, you can you can make your red blood cell count higher, can yeah, you? Yeah, that's what blood doping is, where you yeah. take out your blood and then you put it back in your body. And it makes, fuck? yeah, so you, you obviously the blood you lose, you replenish it and you, you create more. No shit. And then you're putting it back in. Mm. So it, like, makes you bounce off the walls and stuff because you've got so much, you've got so much energy. And so altitude training does the same thing. Yeah, it creates more blood cells. There's a couple of gyms with altitude tents here. I know there's a boxing boxing gym up in like the central like western suburbs or something, and it has an altitude room. Yeah, because those mask things as well. Have you seen those? They're fucking horrible. I got one in my gym bag. Like, <laughs> you, they can make you collapse a lung. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. I've, I've seen them. Cheap. I've never used mine's them. Mine's cheap. Because I would imagine like there'd be a lot of. They do filter out the carbon dioxide and stuff, right? I don't know. Mine's real cheap. My mate gave it to me and I tried it on once and I was like, it, it takes half your breath away. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's really weird. Well, But then again, if you get like a really good one, I don't know what they're like because I see like a lot of fighters, like professional athletes use them when they're on the yeah. treadmill and shit. Yeah, but they got all the tubes coming off, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When Francis Ngannou, you're familiar with like Francis Ngannou? No. He's a heavyweight champ of the UFC. He's a... He's a. He was born I'm in. Not um, good with names, but I might have seen him. He's an African bloke. He was born in Cameroon, oh, yeah. and he was poor, and he fled Cameroon to. He walked like he drove through the Sahara Desert with mm. a group of ten dudes in like a charade, like a tiny car. Yeah. Then they got to Morocco, and they were there for six months, living in the jungle, trying to get a boat to get a ball like a paddle board to go to france and they swam the sea with no oars like they had to use their hands insane story and then he was homeless in france for like five years and this was all like six years ago and now he's the heavyweight champ of the world what country does he cameroon he represents cameroon i believe yeah because um i don't want to get it wrong i think it's cameroon it could be cameroon or nigeria yeah, because Cameroons, I think they fled a lot of places because they yeah. um they fled the Gold Coast Games. Mm. The wrestlers did, and they're mm. living here now. But they he, ran away. He grew up in sand mines, so he's just like a genetic freak because yeah. he grew up as a child in sand mines, basically as a slave. Mm. So he's just got this insane physique. And the UFC were advertising him when he was coming up, and one of the promos he was just hooked up to all these machines. And he had, like, this mask on. It was terrifying, but That's he's... scary. Yeah. That's cool, though. It's like, you know, Predator and stuff. Are they, they're they like, they're here. His, name, his name's Predator. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, he's That's... fucking... He's a big bloke. He's very impressive. Like, his physique's so impressive. Yeah, right. It's He has to cut weight to make 265 pounds. How much is that in kilos? That would be uh, 130 and some change. Oh, yeah, yeah. 135 kilo-ish. Yeah. About that. That's crazy. 2.2 so pounds to a kilo, I think. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it's gross. It's crazy knowing that there's someone that big and I'm like 5'5 five, five on a good day. <laughs> 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 well, I think uh, for men's wrestling, uh, I think they have like 130 is the heaviest. Yeah, so that would be like that's heavyweight. So that's sim- 260, similar, yeah. 265. Yeah, and that's in Greco wrestling, I think, and then 125 for freestyle wrestling. Freestyle is what you do. Yeah. Greco's waist up. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. No double legs. No double legs. You can't even use your legs to like hook and stuff. You're not allowed to use them. Like that, the bottom half don't even exist. They're just there to hold you up. So you can't hook someone's legs to keep them down. You have to just control them waist up. Yeah. That would be fucking hard too, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, you'd have to be so strong. So Greco-Roman wrestlers are very strong. You do see Greco-Roman wrestlers are very thick. Yeah. Like skinny ve- legs. Very like, like compact. Big. Yeah. 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 Like Stan, Stan is um I think his forte was Greco wrestling. Yeah, he yeah. yeah you were saying yesterday. Yeah, and then Luba, um, the wrestling club coach. Yeah, he's freestyle, so he was a lower weight class. 
Freestyle is obviously, I think it's more popular sport. Greco is like a niche sport within a niche sport now. Yeah. Um, I think Greco, don't quote me, I think Greco was like one of the first. Yeah. They used to like do it. it naked or something. Yeah. And you could actually grab the willy. <laughs> yeah right when i went to yeah. when i went to greece and cyprus i went to because obviously i think wrestling stemmed from greece like roman times gladiators or something yeah, yeah i think it stemmed from greece and i went to um this old like fucking thousand year old buildings it's mm. all broken down now it's all like remains of um like just old remains of Are they thou- like, but they're gyms like oh right, right they're yeah. old gyms but they're like thousands and thousands and thousands of years old yeah and they're all made of stone but you can see like still remnants of how the gyms were these wrestling clubs yeah and they'd have like these massive rooms like amphitheaters where they would wrestle Mm. and then next to it they'd have their all like their spa yeah and there'd be like there was a well in the middle where they would pour like water onto hot coals and they'd steam yeah after and before matches it was so cool yeah because um I think it, like, came around or something when, you know, how they'd have the gladiators and they'd kill each other. So, yeah. like, people would buy their gladiators, spend a lot of money on them, and they'd just die. So I think they brought wrestling into it because they're like, oh, you could still beat the person. And but not they, die. Yeah, but they don't mm. die. And then you're like, then they can train up, and then you never know. They come back and they beat the person that beat them. And I think that's how wrestling sort of stemmed. Oh, it would have been so brutal back then. They'd be yeah. doing it on fucking just stone not even yeah. concrete not even just flat concrete it would have just been just Gravel. rubble <laughs> oh my god i think india has um, a sport um their wrestling is mud wrestling so it's not like I've in mud that. it's like on dirt mm. and they're basically the only way to win is to take someone down so they could go on for like 45 minutes wrestling standing they have some questionable sports in india have you seen some of the i played kabaddi for new zealand kabaddi yeah that's an indian sport it's like you've got these two teams so you've got your stoppers uh, I can't remember what the people who and your runners or something it's like Quidditch, <laughs> <laughs> similar maybe. Um, so like I was, a, uh, I was a stopper. Um, so there'd be four of us linked, and we had to hold hands, and we weren't allowed to let go until one of the runners came at us, so that entered through a gate, and they had thir- as soon as they entered through the gate, they had thirty seconds to touch one of us and then get back through the gate. <laughs> and us as stoppers, we could either detach. And attack them and stop them from... How do you attack them? So you tackle them, you just grab them up top, just hold them down on the ground. Or the runner could touch someone and the person they touched had to stop them from getting back through the gate. But if, like, two people broke off at the same time, per se, then they get a point, the runner gets a point. Yeah. So we played that... I played that game for New Zealand. And what was it called? Kabaddi. Kabaddi. Yeah. I've got to look up a compilation on that on YouTube after this. Yeah. And then... um. Yeah, I think we came third in the world, uh, New Zealand did it, in no 2015, shit. yeah. You just like your little niche sports. Oh, it was good at the time. It's that sounds fun. like, it's like Red Rover. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it's like, it's weird. that's a cool sport. I don't know, what's Red Rover? Red Rover's like where you're in the middle, mm-hmm. and there's a group of people, and you call them over, and whoever you tackle becomes uh, your teammate bull rush in new zealand yeah red rover yeah so yeah we call that bull rush so i just got the kids in the m16 wrestling class playing bull rush that's fun yeah you should do that with the adult class yeah who do you reckon would be the last one standing at the gym declan declan yeah because he's tall but he's strong tall and he like has good body awareness yeah yeah what about harry harry's pretty big dude if he was running at full speed you could fake it i think you could fake going and he would like go to sprawl and then, <laughs> <laughs> then you attack him as he's like halfway falling down or something yeah, they do they got some fucking strange sports indians got this he would sport. get so competitive they Who? Start doing, i think people get so competitive. we should start, do like, it at the palming. beach <laughs> do it at the beach one day it should that will be fun jack might win yeah he'd, he'd just nibble. go under the radar <laughs> you'd be like oscar so oscar when he's like the kid one of the kids he's just like just hangs cruise out. through yeah just like hops along and then miles like, is pretty competitive up. he'd probably bring a knife <laughs> <laughs> threaten everyone oh he cops a little bit of shit on every episode i've got to stop <laughs> we jacked up on like mother energy drinks or something have you seen that indian sport where they they lather themselves in honey and then they wrestle Honey. Honey or oil. They just Turkish. La- That's Turkish. Turkish? Yeah, the yeah. Turks put oil. So they wear leather. So they usually yes. wear those leather Yes, and they douse thingies. their, like, 
their yeah. genitals in it as well. It's very strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's hectic. I did oil wrestling like um back in New Zealand, but it's real good for like grip strength and you can't injure yourself because if you do a really bad movement, you slide out of it. Rather than like yeah. catching yourself. Yeah. So you basically just slide out of movements that aren't very good. So you have to make sure every attack is very good and very tight and precise or else you won't get it. Like that's the best thing about it. And if you do slide, you just basically just slide around everywhere. You mm. don't really hurt yourself. But yeah, yeah, it builds up really good like um, grip strength and stuff. If you had to grab someone covered in oil, you'd have to have a pretty good grip. Yeah. How do you train grip strength? Do you have like one of those? Um. No, we at the wrestling club, Luba's developed this like it's like a thick stick. It's like this. It's about this long, and it's got a string on it and like a weight. It's like one point two five kilos, or maybe two and a half kilos. I don't know. On the string, you just gotta like roll it up, and then you gotta like roll it back down. That sounds like something that would seem easy, but it would be deceptively evil. Yeah, it's yeah. real horrible. Like works the um, flexes and stuff, but like you you start getting real tight, and the muscle in here starts like showing, and you're just like freaking out. I freak out a lot. I have to stop. Um, but yeah, that's really hard to do and stuff, but you can't like go side to side and lift your fingers. You have to like do it real close. Something like that probably would be good if you have bad, like forearms and shit though, build mm. strength. i got tendonitis in both of my re- like arms and I have this like little foam roller. It's like this long. It's really hard foam and you just grab it like alternate ways and you just kind of twist it and then yeah. release slowly. Oh, yeah. Sounds like something like that, but that would be, like, torturous almost. Like, you give that to someone you hate. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like, Luba has that. And then it's like, hold the book. And then Luba <laughs> has, like, oh, you've got to grab paper and you've got to scrunch it up as tight as you can. Old, uh, like, old, yeah. old school wrestlers are just some different... They're a different kind of breed of person. Yeah, I remember watching this movie. I can't remember what it's called, but this guy wrestled this bear. But he was training to wrestle this bear, and he was like, grab apples and it like crush them in his hand. That fucking Khabib Namegamedov's dad used to make him wrestle bears. Yeah. Have you seen those videos? Yeah, the bear's it. chained up, but it's still a bear. Yeah. Like it's They're still strong. It's still a bear. You see bears wrestle. Like if you do watch bears, they like wrestle all the time. Hmm. Yeah. Have you seen Foxcatcher? Yes. That's a good movie. That's with Channing Tatum and stuff in his. Channing Tatum, yeah. Yeah. He plays one of the du- Duvant. Duvon brothers? No, fuck. Is that Duvon the, the coach? Duvon, Duvon's the guy. And he that, like shoots yeah, the, the maniac. One of the brothers. Yeah. Fuck. Well, the, one of the brothers. I don't remember the brother's name. They used one of them fought in the UFC once. It's like is it Mark or oh, was it, Mark and something something? But one of them fought in the UFC once. But that's a really good movie. Yeah, that was a good mm. movie. It was a good um, insight into, <laughs> you know, you do you fall off the wagon sometimes and you eat food you shouldn't and then you feel crap and then you have to like quickly lose it all again and mm. stuff like that um but no that was a good movie i like i like that and the way that they walk <laughs> like a lot of the old wrestlers walk like stand. that yeah like Luba, when luva stands you know his knees are bent because it's like just joints aren't yeah what they used to be but it yeah. wouldn't be good for like back when they were doing it trainings obviously like progressed a lot yeah because they would have just been going two thousand percent every single session just yeah. caning themselves if they were injured they just would Fuck that. Just keep going yeah. and keep going. Because um, like even now, Luba, he's 70 years old. He still moves really well for a 70-year-old. Mm. I don't think you'll find any other 70-year-olds moving like he does. And he still like would wrestle. Although he, can't, he hasn't got the fitness, um, stamina, and et cetera, but he still kicks your butt. Mm. <laughs> like, he's still really strong as well. There's some really good like YouTube breakdowns of like rest, of wrestling. Like Chael Sonnen, he's really big in wrestling mm. wrestling communities. He loves college wrestling. Yeah. And he posts a lot on on his YouTube channel. His YouTube channel is massive, but he talks about wrestling a lot on it at the local level. Yeah. And it's pretty cool listening to some of it. Yeah, right. No, I don't know who that is. Chael Sonnen used to be... Mm, I'm pretty sure he was a middleweight in the UFC. He's older now, mm-hmm. but... He was a like he was a college wrestler, yeah. And he was a real big advocate for wrestling. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, a lot of the people who are um, obviously like what well, I'm 29 now, so most of the girls are like in their 30s, 30s, 31, 32. You just don't have any like a wave of up and coming young girls, uh, as you were saying. The girls that do it kind of stay. Yeah. So, like for instance, there's three girls from New Zealand, main main females. Um, and I think, yeah, we're almost, there's two of us 29, one's like 30, 32 or something. Mm. Um, I haven't been that in touch with New Zealand wrestling, so there might be some new girls. Yeah, but I just, 
I don't hear much about it. And even here, I think we've got like drips and drabs. Yeah. Yeah. Whether or not they stay is a different story. So we might. At the moment, there's a few, but yeah, you just have to wait and see pretty much. Yeah, it's important. Right, do you think it's important that young girls do like a some form of combat just to get used to conflict? Not even the sense of just to prepare them for that sort of thing. I mean, I think just every... confidence more than, yeah, more than anything. Confidence um, in yourself. Because you're very confident in yourself probably because you, a lot of it stems from your wrestling training. Yeah. But also um, through school and stuff, it's good to have that focus and concentration on something that's outside of school, mm. not just with friends and parties and stuff. Like I still hung out with friends when I was at high school, but training came first. Like that sort of thing. Like, oh, I can come over and stay, but I have to train f- first, and then I have to go back home. Yeah, train regiment. In the morning. Yeah, You're very like I have regimented. To do those. Yeah, but I think in the, that sense, like it's good for men and women, or girls and boys, to train some sort of combat. You know, because it instills that sense of like, oh, I'm able to do this, and people who don't do it can't do this. It makes you also vulnerable because sometimes you just get fucking reamed, and you're like. Okay, like it's good to get that. It's good to get that humble, like humbleness, like yeah. that false sense of security out your mind, because you'll go, you think you're the best, and then one day someone will just fucking play with you, <laughs> and just fucking just bash you, and it's like okay, I still have a lot. Yeah, I like, still have a lot to learn. That's what's so unique about wrestling as well. Like, you don't know you're about to wrestle a world champion until they put their hands on you, and then you're just you you like, can't do anything. Yeah, pretty mm. much. Like. That's what's like so literally cool. zero. There's nothing. <laughs> there's no lucky. There's no lucky double legs. Like there's. Yeah. You know what I mean. Pretty much. And like, um, belted sports, you can just assume that people who are higher than you are a lot better than you. Where it creates that mental like blockage of being like, oh, they they're supposed to beat me anyway, mm-hmm. so it doesn't matter if I get beaten. Whereas like, at least when wrestling, you can go and be like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I want to do this. And then like, when you can't, you're just like, oh. <laughs> I was doing. <laughs> figure out how to do it. I was doing MMA sparring once. And this little bloke, oh, I can't remember his name. This little bloke ankle picked me onto my head. I was I was doing really well in the stand up. I was I was fucking tuning him up and like just stand up. But then he ankle picked me, dropped me on my head and got on top of me. And he put the most they they he had he was lighter than me, mm. but he felt like he was two hundred and fifty kilos. <laughs> like he just his his chest pressure. He was smashing my nose with his chest. Like he was so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like just smashing his chest into my nose and I was like I'm gonna fucking have to tap like I'm gonna have to tap I don't know what to do <laughs> I couldn't move his pressure was so good anytime I moved he'd just like shift over and and then he'd just smash and then he he's like punching me in the fucking head and then I was like I can't breathe I'm gonna swallow my mouth guard or something <laughs> and I was like I can't tap Jamie Harrison just tapped me to a fucking knee ride like two weeks before that I was like I can't tap so I just let the round ride out. But I was like, that was the first time I was like, that is so terrifying. Because if, <laughs> if someone knows how to wrestle and you don't know how to wrestle, you can't leave until they they tell you to leave. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? You're trapped. Like, you are. There's nothing you can do. There's zero. You could try and bite them. <laughs> like, maybe you could bite them. Maybe you could poke them in the eye. But that would just anger them more. And like, you, <laughs> It's just yeah. Oh, you, do you know who it was? No, it was little. He was a real. I don't think. Do you curly hair? I think. I think is it, it is it Lee. Yeah. Maybe it was Lee, but I don't think it was. I don't think he's at the gym anymore because I don't think I've ever sparred Lee. But yeah. <laughs> I remember Lee once came in. I think he had it like a really important meeting, and I think he tried to blast double someone and copped a knee. And he had two black eyes, and he had like a really important meeting <laughs> that week or something. Yeah, he's had so many knee injuries. Yeah, like, he's been he off for surgery. a while with knee, hasn't he? Yeah, and I think he was overseas or something, and he had like an infection in his knee. Did and... he have a wrestling base? Yeah, yeah. He he's looks wrestling. like a, he looks like the epitome of a wrestler, just so compact <laughs> and big. Nah, he's good. He's very technical. I like Lee. Yeah, he's good to wrestle. Mm. He like does a lot of stuff that I would do as well, so it's quite good um, when he goes to enter for things that I would do, and like having to counter and like just sort of feel it as well so that's really cool i like the diversity of all the different um training partners i have like within 
like Adelaide area because they're all different. They all have like a wrestling base. So yeah, it's the quite community good. seems quite like surprisingly big here. Yeah, so I really like it. So I can't just go in all the time being like, oh yeah, I'll I'll hit this movement on them. Basically, I go in and just like feel what the person like where they're strong, where they're weak, or what I can use and wait for them to do something counter. So it's really good for my adaptation skill to try and figure out everybody and then do what I need to do in order to get a dominant position. So I like having that broad range of different training partners. So that's why I'm super happy that I decided to stay here to prepare for Com Games because everyone, they're, they're all really strong anyway and whatever wrestling base they have, they're really strong at it. So I can learn to adapt to it, to figure it out, um, to counter and stuff, build my game. So, yeah, I'm real happy about that. Yeah, and your camp's going really good, you were saying. Everything's yeah. going good. I just have to get fit, so I'm going to see Kim Robinson. He's going to go make He's going to make you fit. Oh, he'll yeah. make you fit. Yeah. <sighs> when are you doing to that it. today? Yeah, tonight. Oh, nice. At um, Dark Side. Yeah, at Dark, Dark Side. So I go tonight at 5 at Dark Side to go and get fit, do some fitness and conditioning stuff. Um, so I'll do that probably every Tuesday and Friday. You're going to be on a complete complete recovery tomorrow too after that session yes <laughs> yeah for sure i do my first uh ice bath sauna session at complete recovery on Thursday shout out night. to complete recovery i want to get the owner on yeah you should yeah chris yeah i'm interested in all that shit it's yeah it's mm. cool i gotta go in though do they do um do they do dry needling yeah i think i've never been dry needled but apparently it's the shit yeah, I got some dry needles done on my quads on Saturday night. Good. Yeah, my, 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 they like twitched. Like Does it crazy. fucking hurt? No, no, it doesn't hurt. Um, they put it in, you feel it go in, but it's nothing. But it's when like the muscles twitch. Yeah, because I had that on Saturday night when they like twitched like crazy. My friend um, Ashley from Recover Rope Massage, um, she's doing it for me, for my build up. And yeah, it freaked me out. I could feel my whole like body go cold, like cold sweat. That's weird. Oh, I was freaking out because she did this leg and it twitched and it wasn't so bad. But this one, when it twitched, the needle was in. So it freaked me out. Is that your lead leg? No, this one is. I did some plyometrics yesterday and now my leg is tired. In wrestling, if you're, is it the same as like stand up? Your least dominant leg goes forward? Uh, Dominant leg. Dominant leg forward in wrestling. It can really, it depends to be honest. Because if you're reaching with the hands, you have to have the, um, that same side leg back. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I wouldn't have my leading leg forward and also have that armour because I'm mm. not protecting my legs, so I have to alternate between the two. Um, it also gives you a sense of, like, maybe they'll step forward when I step back or something like that. So it's just like a, a getting a feel for the, like, match and for the person. And first ice bath on Thursday, was it? Is it this mm. Thursday coming? Yeah. It's going to be horrible. Yeah, no, I hate cold so much. You, you, do you alternate ice bath sauna? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I see people like do it. I think they go sauna, then ice bath, then sauna. Or do you go to the sauna much? Um, I've been trying to go at least once a week, but um, the Norlang Leisure Centre up their prices, so now I'm like. You can buy really cheap ones. Yeah, no, I don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe get someone to sponsor you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just mm. give me one. <laughs> yeah, because apparently, like forty minutes of sauna a week can reduce risk of heart. Um, disease by like sixty five percent or something. I'm making all those numbers up, but it is it is around it is around those. Oh, that's ball- why I'm not dead yet. So that's pretty. It's cool. around it's around that ballpark. Like it can drastically reduce your um yeah because you get like those shock heat heat proteins or something that you don't regularly get. But apparently, like twenty minute sessions, two two or three times a week. Oh yeah yeah. So I really usually just do a thirty minute session. Well, that's good to know. That's like um when you do neck exercises and you do like your headstands. They're really good for your skin because they replenish all the blood in your really? face. Yeah, and they make oh, you younger for longer. Oh, you're getting so much, so much blood flow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, you do have nice skin. Yeah, I know, because of my headstands. Because you're doing headstands. <laughs> you're upside down yeah. half your fucking life. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So i got fresh blood in my face. <laughs> so where can everyone, when's it happening, before we finish, when's it happening, where can, oh, obviously, hopefully we can watch you, but when's it happening so everyone can root for you? Um, so I compete on the 5th of August. Um, so again, England are seven hours behind, seven, eight hours behind. Um, so that's a Friday. And um, I'm sure you'll be putting up everything on your Instagram, which is just Taylor Ford, is it? Yeah. Taylor.Ford. Is that mine? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That, that is now. Um, yeah. So I'll do my best to post as much as I can. 
uh, very shy about that sort of stuff sometimes um, but I'll do my best to be more active in that case um, even with my trainings leading up I'll try to be more active um, yeah so I get to England London on the first and I'll have those five days to prepare so maybe I'll go ticky touring I don't know go have a look around and then yeah and then I compete on the fifth get that gold medal yeah do my best just put everything that I've been training on display for everyone to see nice yeah all right well thank you for coming on that was fun it was fun it was good talking we'll talk we'll do one when you get back okay we'll do one when you get back when you have time because yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna have a lot of shit to do i reckon probably when you get back oh, i don't know we'll, we'll come we'll to see it when, when, come, yeah when the time we'll comes. do it again thank you no thank you it was good nice. thank you